I am Georgia, Deputy Editor of Aesthetic Medicine, if you don't know by now. Um, if you do, then you've had to listen to me say that over and over again, and I apologise. Um, I'm joined again by the lovely Dr Vincent Wong. Um, Vincent is here today to talk to us about the Tesla Forma um, functional magnetic stimulation device for body contouring. So, um, yeah, so Vincent is an aesthetic practitioner um, at Vindok Aesthetic Academy, which is his own uh, training academy for aesthetics as well. Um, but he's here today on behalf of Tesla Forma. So, um, as always, any questions that anyone has, um, pop them in the Q&A box, they'll be moderated, and then I will come back on at the end and I will ask Vincent your questions and we'll do a bit of a Q&A session. Um, so Vincent, if you're ready, Yes. I will, um, yeah, show my presentation. So hopefully it should all run smoothly. I'm going to turn my camera off um, and then I'll put back on at the end. Cool. Thank okay. you. Let me just do that. Um... Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the session. So my name is Vincent and today I'll be talking about functional energy stimulation with the Tesla form of design. So um, before I start, um, I would like to take to a um, minute to actually go through um, the talking more body. So I'm going to go to the body space of the main function that we are used to. There are three different muscles. So we have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscles, and smooth muscles. For this presentation, we will be focusing on the skeletal muscle, which are the voluntary muscles. Okay. So um, muscles have a few um, unique characteristics, so they can relax and contract very easily. So a good example of this is during pregnancy and childbirth. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, the main um, function of muscles is for body movements and to give us a shape. Um, it also helps with blood circulation, especially with venous return um, back to the heart. And um, it plays an active role in our day-to-day -day, um, activity from eating, breathing, talking, everything, you name it, we need a muscle for it. Okay, so, um, a bit of revision on how muscles contract. Well, our brain sends an impulse to the muscle and the impulse travels through the nerve to the um, neuromuscular junction. And at this junction, SSL choline or noradrenaline is released depending on the stimulus. And um, this basically causes a change in the um, concentration of sodium calcium and this then um, burns ATP to energy and the energy is used to shift the um, myosin on the actin thrust and that's how you get a contraction. Now there are three different types of um, contraction so you have um, four different types sorry so if isometric and isotonic so isometric is when the length muscle does not change um, isotonic is when the um, length actually changes and isotonic can then be divided into eccentric, where the muscle lengthens, or concentric, where the muscle actually shortens. A good example is um, on this diagram here. So by holding a dumbbell, if you hold it at 90 degrees, you will have um, isometric contraction. If you lower it, you get um, eccentric contraction. And if you raise it, you will get concentric um, con contraction. So um, now we're going to talk a little bit about um, total body muscle simulation using the Tessaforma device. So um, in a world of copycats, Tessaforma is a breath of fresh air. And over the next few slides, we'll go through um, the uniqueness of this device. So um, Tessaforma uses um, functional magnetic simulation and it can be used for muscle strengthening, tuning, and sculpting of body areas. As you can see on the slide here, you can use it on um, a lot of different areas of the body, ranging from abs to back and pelvic floor. So um, a very short summary about the FMS and technology. So this is obviously an external simulation, so it bypasses the brain, so we're contracting the muscle without the brain having to send a signal. Um, so the device actually causes rapid changes in magnetic field intensity, and this actually induces an electrical current within the neuron itself, and this is called electromagnetic induction. 
So with the treatment, usually we recommend eight sessions to be carried out within a three week period. So depending on the patient's schedule, they can have it every other day or two to three times a week. Um, the treatment is painless and you can actually do it over the patient's clothes as well. But we'll go through a bit more on that later on. So here is a, a video just to show the different body areas that can be treated. Um, and as you can see, the muscle contractions are very strong um, and you can really get a, a good result from it. So this um, video just shows that you don't actually need skin contact for the device to work. And I think this is particularly important, especially in current times and when we go back to work after lockdown. Um, this is very good from a health and safety point of view. So just no contact with the patient and it reduces any contamination risk. So now I'm going to go through um, the differences between electrical muscle simulation and FMS, which is um, what Tessaforma use. So um, the key points here um, are, number one, the increase in creatine and kinase. So EMS, some of you may be familiar with sort of like the TENS um, machines and things like that. But if you turn it up and use it to use... Um, and you turn up to use it for muscle um, toning or body sculpting, it can actually um, cause a high increase in um, creatine kinase, which is actually um, a marker for tissue damage and muscle breakdown. So actually you are, you are building the muscle, but you're also breaking it down as well. Whereas with functional muscle simulation using magnetic field, um, the increase in um, creatine kinase is actually very, very low. Um, the other key thing is that with EMS, you get electrochemical degradation near where the electrodes are placed, whereas with um, FMS, we don't use that at all. Um, the other point is that with EMS, the penetration into muscles is limited. Obviously, that depends on a few different factors. For example, moisture, resistance of the tissue, resistance of the skin, so on and so forth. Whereas, as you saw earlier um, in the video, the, um, with FMS, you don't actually need skin con contact and it actually um, penetrates about seven to 10 centimeters into the tissue. So we can effectively reach the muscle. Okay. Now, this is a quick video to show the differences between EMS and FMS on ultrasound. So here, as you can see, the uh, muscle contraction for FMS, it is a lot deeper, the whole muscle is working, whereas with EMS, you're only getting a very slight contraction. And um, that's what the device looks like. And you can see here, we are on 89% um, on FMS, and that is um, not the highest. The highest is 100%, obviously. Um, and even at 89%, you get a very strong contraction here in comparison to EMS. And um, this is a different phase of the cycle. So um, as you can see, we have different types of um, simulation for different um, kind of contraction, as we discussed earlier, whether it's um, isometric or isotonic. Okay, so um, a lot of our, obviously there are a lot of competitive um, devices on the market, but most of them are dedicated for aesthetics pur purpose only, and they do not have um, dedicated programs for all body areas. They have limited phases and sequences, and um, some of them are quite uncomfortable for the patient. Um, so with the, um, I know a few different devices that can um, treat different body parts at the same time. Now, this may sound um, very exciting for the patient and for the clinic um, to start with, but if you think about it, if we want effective 100% muscle contraction, if we have that at different parts of the body, it then becomes quite painful for the patient. So um, the unique thing about Tessaforma is that we can treat different body areas at different times, um, but with each treatment, we can get up to 100% um, the super optimal contraction of the muscle. And the other key thing is that we can carry out something called core therapy using the um, magnetic chair. This is something that I'll go through later on in the presentation. 
So Tensorformer is actually um, a device that's developed um, with muscle health um, in mind. So um, there are over 200 dedicated programs. So you can use it for aesthetics or you can use it for pain management, sports injury, gynecology, andrology. It can be used on all body areas. Um, as I said earlier, there are different um, phases within each program. So this range from 10 to 24 within one session. So this means that um, the, it is unlikely to get the um, plateau effect. Whereas with other um, devices with limited um, phases, it is very easy to get the plateau effect. Um, the applicators, as you can see um, in the diagram, they work um, in alternative patterns. So again, this is um, from a muscle health point of view. So if we are, we are getting 100% muscle contraction, um, by if, if we use both um, applicators together, we'll have to turn the power down because it will be uncomfortable for the patient. So with Tesla you get alternative patterns so that when um, one muscle group is contracting, the other muscle group is actually resting. So it allows for the muscle to rest and recover in between contractions. And um, with the core therapy, this is a unique treatment suitable for um, everyone, uh, male and female, young, old, whether you want to increase sports performance or your posture, core therapy is something that um, is very unique to Tessaforma. It uses a chair and also two external applicators. And um, we also have large and small applicators, so you can really tailor the treatment to your patient. So this is just um, a little bit of explanation about the um, chair. So within the chair, you have two applicators, one in the back and one on the seat itself. And as you can see from the um, design, it's very comfortable um, with a full back support, and this can actually help with the posture correction as well. So with the core treatment, core therapy, we are using four different applicators. So one in the back, one on the base of the seat, and two applicators accidentally on the abs. Um, so we're working the core group of muscles um, in one go. And this can be used for gynecology, andrology, physical therapy, pain management, especially those with um, back pain. And you can also use it to help patients with incontinence as well. So differences between workout and Tesla former. So um, obviously with workout and going to the gym, um, we are using the we are relying on the brain to send a signal to contract the muscle. And studies have shown that we can only um, achieve up to about roughly 40% its strength. So we're not getting 100% um, contraction. Obviously, this changes when you're in a fight or flight um, mode. So say, for example, if you're being chased by a dog, you probably can jump over a wall that you normally can't jump over. Um, so during fight, and flight, fight or flight, um, you actually get a higher um, rate of contraction. But with Tesla we bypass the brain um, 100% so that it is an external stimulus and we can contract the muscle up to 100% of its strength. So this is a kind of contraction that cannot be achieved during regular workout. Of course, we always tell our patients that um, Having the treatment of Tessa doesn't mean that they stop going to the gym, doesn't mean that they can eat anything they want. So obviously a healthy lifestyle will complement the treatment as well. So here are some before afters. So this is the 49 year old gentleman, um, obviously with age, metabolic rate decreases. So he actually goes to the gym um, three to four times a week. And um, he, this, there's no change to his uh, workout patterns. So he's using Tessa former, um, to supplement um, what he's already doing in the gym. As you can see, after eight treatments, you can get um, a very good result even at um, age 49. So obviously, if you have younger patients, the results will be better as well. Um, the Tesla format device can also be combined with um, other treatments. So say, for example, if you already have high food devices um, in your um, clinic, you can actually um, do the high food um, procedure after, or if you have things like um, cryotherapy, for example, with true cryo, you can um, do the cryo first and then do the um, Tesla format. So it can be easily integrated into your practice. And here's another um, before after. So this is the um, Botox area. Eight sessions carry out every other day. Um, there's no sports or no diet involved. So this is just purely based on um, 
Tesla former, and obviously everyone's um, muscle is different. Some people may get more dramatic results, and also depending on um, the muscle strength that you have as a, as a baseline. And um, this is another patient. Again, eight sessions carried every other day. Um, no significant change to um, the um, lifestyle or diet. Um, as you can see in the photo to your right, um, even the back appears um, straighter because this patient was treated with not just the abs, but also um, the back as well. So it can really help with posture correction and to balance um, the body out a little bit better. And here's another one. Again, no changes to um, sports or diet. Okay, so benefits of Tessaforma. So um, obviously it is painless, non-invasive, no downtime, no downtime for the patient. Um, you can have different sequences within the same program. So your muscles are always um, contracted and worked at different levels, different angle, different depths. So you don't get the plateau effect. Um, there are four different channels, as you saw earlier with the chair, you could use up to four applicators in one go for the core therapy. Um, as I've said earlier, it can um, work without direct contact to the skin, which I think is very important. And um, there are over 200 different programs, so you can really mix and match to give your patient a real holistic approach to body sculpting, um, depending on um, what your patient wants. So say, for example, I treat quite a lot of um, bodybuilders, so I use um, the... Um, the test of armor for their aesthetics purposes, so abs and arms, but we also work on the core therapy as well. So I incorporated all of that into a program for them. So you can really offer your patients something that's truly tailored to them. Um, the other thing with Tesla is that there are no consumables. So um, once you have the device, you don't really need to buy anything else. So I think that is um, a very good um, thing to keep in mind, um, especially for clinic owners, especially in times like this, um, where um, COVID-19 has had a huge um, financial implications for a lot of us. Okay, so contraindications. Um, so as with all um, sex procedures, you don't want your patient to be pregnant or um, and, and, and you want your patient to be fit and healthy. So main contraindications are listed in, in, this, um, in this slide. So basically you don't want to treat anyone with a pacemaker or any metal bits that bobs in their body. Um, I always tell my patients to come in their sportswear um, because if, say for example, if they are wearing jeans or any um, items of clothing with metallic parts such as buttons or so forth, these areas can actually heat up. So I always tell my patients to come in something that that's comfortable spots like sportswear for example so that um we can avoid that um if your patient has any piercings please have to remove it obviously again metallic parts means that um it can heat up um also patients with tattoos um some tattoos are actually um, made with metallic um ink so if the ink has metallic parts um and it's in in the direct treatment area of the of the device um, it will actually cause um, uh, a discomfort in the tattoo area. Um, however, um, nowadays, a lot of um, inks are actually plant-based, so um, patients who are new to tattoo um, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the other thing that um, Tessaforma can do is actually to help with um, Parkinson's and a lot of different um, uh, neurological diseases as well. So with Parkinson's, um, it can actually help to reduce the tremor. Okay, so um, these are a few common questions that patients ask. So the first one is how many sessions need to be carried out? We recommend eight sessions, but obviously each patient is different. Um, this can be reduced to six or increased to 10. Um, so it really depends on your patient assessment. Um, the other thing is how does it feel? So it is highly tolerable, obviously, the patients will be contracting their muscles without them contracting it actively. So um, there's a strange sensation, but it is not uncomfortable in the slightest. Um, downtime, obviously there isn't any downtime. It's very straightforward, in and out procedure. Treatments takes between 30 minutes to 60 minutes, depending on what we're trying to achieve, which program we're using, so on and so forth. 
Okay, so the tests of format, um, apart from those um, that are contraindicated in the slides that we've shown earlier, it, it is pretty much suitable for anyone, young, old, whether you want to improve your posture, whether you improve your aesthetics look, whether you want to improve your sports performance, or whether you have um, an underlying condition, for example, incontinence, Parkinson's, it is suitable for everyone. So it is a wide range of patients. So um, when will I see results? This is probably the most popular question and probably the one that is most difficult to answer um, simply because everyone's muscle is different um, and we have different baseline and different percentage of increase with the, um, with the device. But most of my patients start to feel the change within the, after the first session. And as you can see in the before after photos, um, you can see one month after and and the results actually improve um, with time as well. So you can see what it looks like in two months after the treatment. So um, that's the end of our presentation and thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent, that was great. Um, we've got some questions so i'm gonna start running through them what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna make you and i a bit bigger again oh there we go you've done it. um yeah that was brilliant thank you really informative um oh good lots of nice comments okay so let's start with so someone's asked can it be used on the chest area for men um the only area we can't use is around the heart so chest we can't do no. okay yeah. And why why is that? Because obviously we don't just stimulate the um, cardiac muscle and mm -hmm. also for patients with um, underlying heart diseases like arrhythmia or anything like that, they may not know they have it. So we yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, great. Um, okay, so uh, if anybody has undergone angioplasty, yeah. as they said stunt, I think you mean, and if the stent has been used, yeah. Can you, can you use Tascoform on that patient? It depends on the material of the stand. If it's not metallic, then yes, you can. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, again, like anything, you would you would take a really detailed medical history, wouldn't you, anyway? Uh, so for Anything um, metallic within the body, um, you shouldn't be having that. Okay, cool. Um, and actually on that, someone else has asked... Um, can it be used with a coil and copper tea? And I think what they mean is if a patient has a, um, a copper coil contraceptive device fitted. Mm. Um, it depends on which area that we're treating. So say okay. for example, if we're treating the arms, then that shouldn't be a problem. But if we're treating the abdomen or anywhere near where it is, it is better to remove it. Yeah, okay. Um, Okay, after having a baby, so how long after having a baby would you be able to use, um, do the treatment on a patient? Um, once the area has healed, then you're good to go. Okay. So as soon as you've recovered from childbirth, that's it. Okay. Um, someone has, so yeah, someone's, might be a similar answer, um, but someone's asked, when can we start treatment after abdominoplasty? So again, same. So um, after any surgery, once the tissues are fully healed, then we can um, start with the muscle contraction. Okay, cool. Um, and that would probably be also involved in whatever aftercare advice that patient has from their surgery or their postpartum or whatever. Yeah. Um, um, how many supramaximal contractions does it undergo? So within a 30 minute period, we are getting up to 50,000 um, supramaximal contractions. So depending on the length of time, so if you do it for an hour, you get 100,000. Okay. Um, oh, lots and lots of questions coming in. Okay, cool. Um, and someone has asked, is the number of contractions important for results? Um, not well, yes and no. So it is important for, for the result because obviously the more you contract, um, the better the results will be. But there are also other factors, for example, the depth of the contraction. So if it is a superficial contraction, if you do it 100,000 times, it's not going to be as effective, say, for example, yeah. as a deeper one, but with 50,000 contractions. Yeah. So the two main factors are frequency and the depth of the contraction. Okay. Mm. So 
just, I think, so someone's asked a question about um, treating with uh, the core therapy yeah. um, setting. So they've asked, how do you choose patients? So I think they're talking about um, patient selection. So yeah. if someone, if a patient has a bit of a belly, yeah. is there, I, I know with um, quite a few of these similar um, muscle stimulation devices, it's more about superficial fat rather than, so a patient selection basically is what I'm trying to say if someone yeah. um, has a bit of a tummy. Yeah. So for um, someone with a bit of a tummy, if their main aim is to get rid of that, then I would combine it with other treatments like Haifu or um, cryo or anything like that, um, or even um, fat dissolving injections. So you can combine it that way. Um, I think if you just use muscle simulation alone, you are going to strengthen the muscle. But obviously, if there is a layer of fat outside, you can't really see the results, right? Um, and although the, the treatment actually helps to burn fat locally, if someone has a bit of a belly, it's not going to be that dramatic. So mm -hmm. it is combined with other things. And for core therapy, it is suitable for anyone because um, basically it's just strengthening the core muscles. So whether you are just looking to improve your sports performance or whether you have um, incontinence issues or anything like that, core therapy can really help um, build the posture as well. Mm. So, but just managing patient expectations, I guess, when it comes to if someone's got quite a bit of excess fat yeah okay um uh, oh so in the uh, before and after pictures you showed mm -hmm. someone's just asked um those patients were they also undergoing a diet as well so our no. results connected. so that's just from test performer just from test performer so certain patients um those regular gym goers have been going to the gym those who don't go to the gym don't go to the gym so they just keep to their um existing lifestyle okay cool um fab all right um so are so are there smaller and bigger applicators um and which one which is recommended to be used at joints like parts of the body where there are joints if yeah. i use a bigger applicator is it going to affect end results so um Obviously, they're big and small. So the smaller ones would be more suitable for a research, the arm and things like that, and thighs. Um, but in practice, I only have the big ones, and I use it all over, and it doesn't make a difference at all. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. even on a even on a slightly smaller area, like in a near a joint, it still can work. Yeah, it still works. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I found is that, say, for example. Um, Female patients who are quite petite, so even if we're doing apps, normally on a man, I would put two of the large applicators. Um, on a petite, small, um, thin women, um, I would put one applicator in the middle, but in the machine itself, you can actually set so that you can still deliver a very effective um, treatment with just one applicator. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh... You, you kind of touched on this anyway, but someone's just asking, is this safe to combine with contouring and other body contouring treatments? Yes, absolutely. So with um, anything to do with cryo, so for example, cool sculpting, um, true cryo, things like that, it is better to do it before um, Tessaforma. Anything else, for example, energy-based thing like HIFU and um, radio frequency, so on and so forth, you can do it after and is that just because if, if you're likely to be using cryo to target for actual fat loss and you'd want to do that first? Um, so you can use high food target fat loss as well, but the theory behind it is that if we are using um, cryo, obviously we get vasodilation, vasoconstriction um, and vasodilation. So it is better to do the tessaforma after the vasodilation. Okay. So the one, because obviously with the tessaforma we're generating heat as well mm -hmm. so we have to visit it and then visit construct and then visit it again yeah yeah okay fab um okay how well, well again we've kind of touched on this but how well does it work on a patient with a higher bmi um, um again with patients with larger bmi obviously the um, expectations need to be explained and managed properly um probably a bit of lifestyle advice um and combination treatments mm -hmm. okay um and then similarly what about age age-wise so someone's asked uh, if a patient was aged about 40 for example would it have any impact 
Um, obviously, with um, with increasing age, our metabolic metabolic rate decreases. So um, obviously, it will work a lot better on younger people. They'll get faster results, more dramatic. But age is not uh, a factor here because um, we can treat anyone of any age and they can still um, strengthen the muscle. The muscle can still gain the strength. But it's just how quickly you get there that's, mm. that's what's different. And I guess if a patient is a, is in that age bracket, but perhaps they, they have quite an active lifestyle and they're quite fit, regular gym or something, that and then yeah. it's accelerated, wouldn't it? Absolutely, because yeah. it, it varies, because everyone has a good different baseline muscle tone, different lifestyle, different metabolism rate. You know, there's so many um, factors to consider. Mm, cool. Okay. Um, okay, someone's asking about price points when compared to another device, which we're not going to talk about another device right now, but um, definitely get in touch with... Um, Get in touch with the with the medical with Tesla former um, for anything about price. We'll we'll put an email address up so you can get some more info about that. Um, right. Um, so, are there any clinical studies, clinical data available online that people can just have a look at to um, verify claims of the machine? Yeah. Yes, um, we can send it across um, if they drop us an email. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, we'll. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll pop an email down and you can get in touch and you can request that info. Um, we'll make sure we do that at the end. Um, okay. Someone's asked, okay, with... So someone's asked um, about applicators again um, with abdomen treatment, which, how do we decide whether we should go with one or two? Which combination is most effective? So, so um, I know you've said, depending on the kind of size and the build of the patient, whether you'd use one or two, but would you perhaps get, does, does one combination get better results than the other? Like, would you ever use a big and a small or two rather than one? Okay, so I always, okay, by default, I always use um, two applicators for the um, tummy. The only exception is when you have a very, very tiny patient. Um, so with... Two applicators, you can position it differently. So um, depending on the different, it is a little bit difficult to explain without the device next to me because um, within the device, you have different programs that you can um, tailor to your patient. So depending on um, obviously the size, what your aim, aim is, what the um, end result do, that they want, you can actually um, really tailor it to that patient. But generally I would, use two but you can position it differently so you can either put it side by side you can put it up and down or you can also treat it back at the same time so it just depends on what your patient wants but generally speaking i will use two okay great um okay lots of questions still come in um okay what about maintenance treatments and um how longevity of results how long do results last so once you build the muscle that's it. You have that. You have that um, muscle tone there. Um, in terms of maintenance, it depends on the patient. Um, obviously, there's budget and things like that as well. Um, so, if the patient can afford and likes the treatment, they can have it once a month after the initial um, sessions to reach their um, results. They can have it once a month, or if they want to repeat the whole thing in about six months' time, they can do that as well. So it all depends on um, their lifestyle factors, whether they're going to the gym, what they're eating, so on and so forth. But the muscle tone, once you get there, it's there. It's just up to the patient to maintain it. Okay, so it's not a case of if, if the treatments are more spaced out, that they'll lose that that work that they've paid. No, yeah. 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 yeah, so say, for example, if someone goes to the gym four days a week, and once they get the definition they want, if they continue going to the gym four days a week, they're not going to lose the result. Yeah, okay, fab. Um, okay, let me just check how we're doing for time. Yeah, we're fine. Um, so someone is asking about, so, uh, so it was mentioned that the device can contract muscle 100% in contrast to 40%. Humans can do, is it safe to go over that 40%? And what's the maximum that you use in your practice? And I guess they're talking about the maximum um, like contractions, yeah. Okay, so um, the okay, so with anything higher than forty percent, it's called supraoptimal um, 
contraction. So this is um, very effective in terms of building muscles. But obviously our brain will not necessarily allow us to go up there because obviously it uses a lot of um, energy and it is difficult to get that kind of contraction. Even in the gym, if you can get up to 100% um, contraction, because obviously 40% is a guy. Some people are 50, some people are 60. Even if you do get up to 100%, you won't be able to maintain it for any length of time, right? So with this device, we're getting 100%, but we are also allowing the muscle to rest, recover, and rebuild before the next cycle comes in. So yes, it is perfectly safe to go up there, but it is important to let the muscles rest in the mm -hmm. direction. Okay. Um, on a similar note, in terms of letting the muscles rest, someone's just asking with um, combo treatments again. Mm. Can can you do a, um, can you do like cryo and then the Tesla form in the same day? Yeah, that's fine to do. Because uh, you explained it's it's working yeah. in different ways, isn't it? Exactly. So they'll all complement each other. Yeah. Okay. Fab. Um, so someone just asking about. Uh, well, two people actually asking about visceral fat um, mm. kind of touched on. So is, it, is there any possibility that it can work on visceral fat? Um, I think the effect on superficial fat is a lot higher. Um, visceral fat is difficult to target. Um, it's mainly lifestyle. But um, for someone who doesn't have a healthy lifestyle, who doesn't go to the gym, maybe testiform would be something good to kickstart on that. But then it doesn't have a direct effect on visceral fat. Mm -hmm. So that that wouldn't be your go to for that indication. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this person means. So someone has asked how the number of Tesla important is important for EBD devices. If that's your question, could you just clarify what you mean, and then we can. Hopefully you're still here. If you could just clarify what you mean, um, then we can ask. So about um, the number of tests are important. I think Tesla, if I'm not wrong, is the measurement of um, the magnetic field intensity. So for it this, yeah. <laughs> so for this um, treatment, I believe it's three Tesla, and I think it's the highest um, that we can get. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cool. Well, we've had lots of questions. Um, and so I think, oh, hold on. Okay, we've got a few more. Um, someone's just asking, sorry, can you say that again, the last point? Which point? Which point? And then I'll ask Vincent to repeat it. Um, and then, okay, so someone's asking, what are your recommendations while using applicators for lymphatic drainage? So um, within the, again, when you get the device, when you turn it on, you can have different categories of treatments. And then within each category, there are different programs that it can tailor. So um, all you have to do is select the right one, the machine does it automatically, and you just have to place the applicators to the area. Okay. So depends on um you know what again the patient assessment so on and so forth mm -hmm. okay cool um and can, so can you repeat the point about when we were talking about um EVD and energy based devices yeah. okay so um with tesla former we're using three tesla i believe um which is the highest um number in terms of measurement of the electromagnetic field intensity um are there energy based devices obviously use a different um, measurement because there's different technology altogether. Um, I guess the best way to make a comparison is um, with one of the slides I've put in, EMS versus FMS. So the main key points would be um, the level of increase in creatinine kinase, um, which is a marker of tissue damage, and also the um, uh, degradation um, within the area where the applicator touches the skin. Um, and also the depth of penetration, because with um, other technologies, the depth of penetration actually varies a lot, depending on obviously moisture, um, tissue resistance, skin resistance, so on and so forth. Whereas with um, Tesla because it's electromagnetic, it actually um, gives you a guaranteed seven to 10 centimeter depth of penetration. Great, thank you. 
Um, okay, someone, let me just have a look and see if we've got anything else coming in. Um, oh, we've just got people just asking for each other's contacts. So I'm just going to um, approve them so you guys can talk to each other um, about that. Cool. Well, I think that is all we've got time for. Thank you so much for all your questions, everyone. Um, I think everyone really enjoyed that, Vincent. So thank you as well. Um, you. Do you just want to remind us? Actually, I think earlier up, someone was asking about where your clinic is. Oh. If I'm not mistaken. So do you want to just... Oh, yeah. So someone was just asking where your practice is. Okay, so um, my practice is at Adam and Eve's Muse in High Street, Kensington, and also at um, number 10, Harley Street. Okay, so in London, obviously, everyone. Um, cool. And do you want to just, um, have we got an email address if anyone wants to get in touch about the device directly? Uh, yes, I do. Give me two seconds. Let me That's just get right. Erkan's email up. So it's Erkan, spelled E R K A N, at beautyform.co.uk I'm going to type that in as well so just, sorry could you just repeat it for me and I'll type it so it's E-R-K-A-N at beautyform.co.uk I've done that right oh perfect okay oh we've got some we've got I can here wonderful okay yeah. great um, so yeah, if anyone wants any information about the device, go ahead and send them an email. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Vincent. That was brilliant. Everyone's saying thank you. That was great. Um, oh, just seen one more question. <laughs> okay, we've got time for one more. It's fine. Um, so someone's just asked, will Tesla former work on benign prostate hyperplasia patients? Yes, it will. Yes. Cool. Easy. Cool. Great. Um, oh, what's the email for contacting you for signed? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, what is the email address if people want to get in touch for the uh, clinical? Okay. Yeah, the papers. Oh, I can as well. Okay, so yeah, we just popped that in earlier. So if you want to just give I can an email for um, if you want to have a look at the papers as well. Fab. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Vincent. We have um, two more seconds left today, and then we're done with the virtual event. So tune into those last two if you want to. Um, yeah. Thanks, Vincent. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.